Altele is going to have uh, a very good year this year. It's a turnaround story. Um, this year is really all about, all about delivery. Uh, do I just do that? Um, I'm more conservative, so I'll stick to the conventional language for my um, forward-looking statements. Um, this will be a strong year for the company, and I'm going to try and explain in a few slides why. As Eric said, we have one mine in operation, has been for a few years. Um, the second is under construction. The first stage of that mine is about 85% complete, both in Mexico, uh, both with 10 plus year mine lives. Uh, new management. Um, I came on board in September. And as Eric said, I've spent the last three months or so digging around in the weeds, understanding where the company's at, uh, what needs to be done. Uh, we've just appointed a new CFO. Um, and I've made some other changes at the sort of project level uh, to strengthen the teams and uh, enable us to do what we say we're going to do. That's the critical thing for the company this year. We've shifted our focus a little at the Campo Morado mine, um, more towards copper. So copper is now contributing significantly more to our revenues than uh, in previous years. Both projects have got excellent upside, uh, both through resource expansions, technical opportunities, um, and also increasing throughput. And I'll, I'll say a little bit about that in a moment. And we're a mining company with an operating mine, soon to have a second mine, and our market cap is 14 Canadian, which is just insane. Uh, so a little bit more about the operations. Um, the the Taweto project, you can see there in Durango State, uh, just over a 10 year life of mine. Uh, significant resources beyond that. Um, about just over 70% of the revenues is from precious metals, 60% gold. There was a PFS update in 2022. You can see the numbers there, MPV5, 160 million and an IRR of 65%. Um, that was all based on the, the nameplate capacity of the mine, which is 1,000 tons a day. Campo Morado, uh, it's only, it was built off a of PEA back in 20, uh, mid-2000s, mid, mid mid um, but it's got a 20-year life and resources. Uh, at the moment, we're running a five-year life of mine. We'll easily be extending that out to 10 years just with additional metallurgical test work. That's all it requires. We're doing a lot at the moment to improve the metallurgical performance. Um, and again, strong upside at both. And I'll show you some uh, illustrations of why. Uh, I've joined the board. We've got a, you know, a large board. I won't dwell on that. You can read it afterwards. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, senior Mexican guys on the board who have a lot of experience in the sector in Mexico. I think that's really important to be successful. Um, and they're very well connected through the mining industry, which helps a lot. Um, about with uh, management, insiders, we hold about 27% of the company. You can see there the market cap, uh, 14 to 15. We've got about 35 million shares outstanding now. We did a consolidation a few weeks ago. So a few things about Taweto. Um, the reserves, the PMP there is just over 3.5 million tons, just under 5 grams gold equivalent. So we've got about 600,000 ounces gold equivalent there. Um, there are two stages uh, focused right now on delivering the first stage, 500 tons a day. We're about, as I said, about 85% complete on that. Um, the second stage, 1,000 tons a day, uh, will follow directly afterwards. We're expecting to complete the 500 ton project in, uh, in Q2. 1,000 uh, ton will depend on, on how we go with the rights offering that's out there and, uh, and our cash flow forecasting, but we're going to do that as soon as possible after the 500. I think a, a conservative estimate for that would be Q4, and hopefully we'll do better than that. And commercial production, let's say, towards the end or by the end of the year. Um, just to give you a flavor of the, the, the cash potential, um, the EBITDA for 2024 for this operation will be about just over $2 million a month. So that project alone is more than our current market cap uh, just in one year. Um, we're actually in pre-production already. We're doing just around 300 tons a day. Um, the plant is performing really well. 
um, and we're getting some really good grades both in uh, zinc cons and also gold in the uh, in the lead con. Uh, there's some uh, profiles from the from the PFS. You can see the all-in sustaining there stays comfortably below a thousand dollars an ounce equivalent, uh, and seventy plus plus percent of, uh, of our revenues comes from the precious metals, as I said. And again, uh, some metrics there from the from the PFS I mentioned. Um, I won't dwell on that. The potential, and where's the laser? Bingo. The um, the current mine area is that, is that white outline there. And you can see the potential of the veins. They extend a long way along strike. Um, they extend right down to the valley floor. A lot of it is exposed. You can follow the veins visually. Uh, they also extend upslope, up and over the ridge and down the other side. Um, so there's a lot of potential. The company hasn't done any exploration since acquiring the property back in 2016-17. So a lot of potential. Um, there's some very good grades, some sort of scattered sampling, some drilling. You can see the red veins there have had drilling uh, and have some degree of resources. The rest is just targets. So a lot of potential there. Kemper Morado. Um, again, it's just a few metrics. We're running at about 2,400 tons a day right now. Um, Increased focus on copper, copper this year. That was a deliberate decision to move more to uh, copper. It was about 25% in concentrate terms, 25% of the revenue from copper last year. We've increased that to about 40% now. Um, and in our, in our concentrates, copper cons, we get uh, a lot of uh, silver as well, seven or 800 grams a ton silver in the copper con. So copper alone is about 20% of our revenue for this forthcoming year. Uh, and the EBIT uh, this year, um, 1.5 to 1.8 million dollars a month uh, from that project. So again, that that alone is greater than our current market cap. Um, one of the things that I did, I, um, uh, I I used to be with Lundin Mining, and there's a group, Asenco Mining Engineers, uh, sorry, Process Engineers that I that I worked with in Chile at the Candelaria operations. Um, I knew they were really good plant guys, so I brought them in to Campo Morado, and they did a great job. They, they've given us a, a really valuable roadmap now for how to, from one end of the flow sheet to the other in the plant, how to progressively optimize and improve performance. Um, one of the keys to, to a, a VMS deposit like Campo Morado is, uh, is geometallurgy. It's that intimate linking of the mineralogy of the ore bodies and how that material behaves in the plant. You can't simply blend lots of different ore bodies and chuck it in the plant and hope that you'll get great recoveries. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so geometallurgy is the key. And um, we, we've embraced that. We were, we've implemented a program already. To give you an idea of some of the other opportunities there, back in uh, Nearstar, the previous owners, they did some test work in the 2012-13 period just looking at the difference of using fresh water in the plant rather than recycled process water. And at that time, with that flow sheet and the reagents they were using at the time, they got a 14% increase in copper recovery just by using fresh water. So staggering opportunities there. None of this is factored into the plan for this year. It's all upside. Now, of course, we, you know, we're doing water test work of our, of our own now with our current configuration, but it gives you a flavor of what the opportunities can be at Campo Morado. Um, and again, some potential. Um, Nearstar did some uh, did some exploratory work uh, and believed there was a second mineral horizon below the existing mining areas. Um, there's a lot of potential. These other ore zones have uh, only had limited drilling. They're not at resource category yet. So lots of opportunity to expand the resource base also at Campo Morado. Um, but it has to go in concert with metallurgical test work. The key, that's the key. The history of the project has really been more reactive than proactive, uh, and that's what we're changing now. Uh, looking further ahead in the planning and making sure, particularly for this year, that the plans are really robust, we understand the metallurgy, and then you don't get any surprises in the plant. So the, the opportunities at Campo are um, gradually improved plant performance, We've done some test work on improving precious metal recoveries. There are some significant opportunities there. We need to stabilize the base metal part of the operation at the moment. 
uh, but we've been doing test work and will continue to do so. I'd hope to do a conceptual study on that, a sort of scoping type study by the end of the year, and perhaps be implementing uh, a solution to the precious metals side of the business during next year. Uh, we also have a tailings dam which contains 280,000 ounces of gold equivalent, uh, which we're looking at reprocessing. So briefly, um, the catalyst for this year, uh, Campo Morado is gonna have a good Q2 starting in March. Uh, we've improved the, the, the copper grade in the, in the concentrate by 5%. We're just finishing the installation of additional cells there to do that. And we're mining in higher grade copper areas. Um, we'll deliver on the 500 ton project for Taweto, finally, um, in Q2. And then, Q, and then the 1,000 ton project will follow uh, as soon as we can make it happen. But by the latest, I would say Q4. So by the end of the year, we'll have two operating mines, significant EBITDA uh, cash generation, and uh, it's the sky's the limit then upwards from there. So thank you.